welcome to a very special all television fandomonium. I am with Alan Seppenwall. I'm with Roth Cornett. And we are very happy to be with you. You know what we're going to talk about today? The idea of the 10 hour movie. You hear this a lot, right? Yes. I was thinking about my favorite movies of the year, and there was a part of me that was thinking of including Fargo, the television series, which of anything I think can get away with calling itself a 10-hour movie. I actually do. Alan disagrees. I can see by the I just, chagrin. Uh, I th- okay. This is coming from a background of like me writing about television for a long time and coming to like press tour, which is why I'm here in LA right now taping this, where you go to these things all the time and people are like, you know, we're not making a TV show. We're, ma- we're making a one hour movie every week or, you know, we're not making a sitcom. We're making a half hour play every week. And it's like everyone has to constantly. Has anyone ever said that? As if that would entice all an audience? All the time. <laughs> all the time. The multi-cam. No one sees plays, fool. Your marketing is flawed. It's like if you make a multi-cam <laughs> sitcom, it, you have to say we're making a Broadway play. Right. It's like by law. <laughs> And everyone always has to apologize for the fact that they're making a freaking TV show. TV is great. Like, yes. that's why I do what I do when I write about TV. And you, like, there are specific things about the medium of television that, yes, while it is filmed and while it can tell a story, like, it's not a movie even if you do it over 10 hours. And I think one of the reasons, like, some of these Netflix shows, as much as I like them, or Amazon shows, kind of slog in the middle is because they're starting to try to treat it as a 10 hour movie and it shouldn't be like there's just not enough material for that there's ebbs and flows and no one's sitting there watching it for 10 hours like the episode i mean okay sometimes there are sometimes fine sometimes there are (laughs) okay but like you don't just want 10 hours of stuff all in chronological order there's a value to the episode and even fargo which you talk about which is great like each hour was its own thing. So you have like mm-hmm. the siege of the precinct yeah. episode and you know, you've got the, the assault on the motel episode. Yeah. You've got a bunch of different things. Like this is the episode where Mike Milligan comes in, etc. And like, that's what, what I think worked about it, even though it's telling this bigger story and Noah Hawley and the people making Fargo understood that kind of happy medium. And I think some of the other people working in cable and working in streaming are, are starting to lose that lesson or haven't figured out yet at least how to do the new lesson. And even if you one day figure it out, it's still not going to be a 10 hour movie. It's just going to be a different kind of TV show. Well, I will say this. What was interesting to me is that I watched, I went and I saw, um, hateful eight. Yes. Um, and then the very, which had a very, dis- and I saw the longer, the 70 millimeter version, which had the intermission. And it did feel like two distinct pieces, you know, one hour and a half piece. And then it structurally, even it switches. Yeah. They, they introduce VO in the second half and they introduce the, it, basically it, it changes. Um, yeah. and so it felt like two distinct pieces. Pieces. And then the next day, I marathoned in a day, um, making a murderer and on Netflix. And so I, I did start to think, OK, this is obviously far longer, um, but one piece really does lead into the next in that particular yeah. Netflix series. Um, so what is the, what what is the difference? Is it just length of time? Is it? Yes, you're right. Fargo is structured. Each episode is its own thing, but it also aired once a week and they knew it was yes. going to. It had to be structured that way. Exactly right. And I, and I think that there's there's a certain discipline that comes with that, that like as, as awesome as it is, the, the new frontier and the new freedom of the Netflix and the Amazon and the Hulu shows, they're still like you kind of you risk losing that discipline and just kind of saying, oh, well, we don't need to worry about like. Maybe this area kind of sags, but it's okay because we need to tell this part of the story, so we're not going to worry about it. And the interface means that people will just move on to the next one anyway. Well, well then when you think about things like how serialized movies are becoming, even like the Star, Star Wars, which just came out. Yeah, I mean, everyone compared Force Awakens to a pilot for a J.J. Abrams show. Correct, because it did have a very distinct dot, dot, dot to it, right? Yeah. Um, as the previous Star Wars films did, as a matter of yeah, fact. Yeah, Empire Strikes Back doesn't yeah, end. It yeah, stops. It stops. And then you know that it's going to pick up again. And I think that we see that more and more as well, where it has a very distinct feeling of like to be continued. And so even structurally speaking to me, I think the, that what distinguishes movies and television is a little more fluid now than it ever was. No, it absolutely is. Especially Although as- I just contradicted myself because I said the original. Anyway. No, but as you have like creators of television like J.J. and Lindelof and a lot of other TV people going into the movies, Joss Whedon, the Russo brothers, 
and you have movie people like Steven Soderbergh coming to television, I think you're going to see more and more fluidity. The Nick, for instance, the Soderbergh mm-hmm. Cinemax show, didn't really feel like un- like it had elements of other cable dramas, but like the look and feel of it was something different. So I, I think like you may see more of that cross pollination. But again, I just like. There's a part of me, because I've been hearing it so long as an apology, right. this idea of it's not a TV show, it's yes. a movie, just makes me roll my eyes and say, it's a, it's a TV show. <laughs> it's really okay. You can say it. It's not your fault. You work in TV. Well, and it's funny because I think that... that um that hierarchical sense that there is such a difference in the quality between movies and televisions is such is such a long ago thing now. Yeah. And I think most people, and I would agree, would say that the very top quality storytelling often is on television. Yep. Um, it is incredible work being done on television. I have a couple of movies that are my favorites of the year, but I wouldn't necessarily say that they are as stories superior to my favorite shows of the year. Um, so I don't, I, I, I do agree with you that the problem is that it sounds like an apology and it sounds like you're shooing being a part of television, yeah. but structurally, I do think there is something to I it. Think, I think we need to come up with a new name and I've talked to like Jill Soloway who does Transparent for Amazon. She says like, we look at it as if we're making a five hour movie and it definitely does feel like one big chunk and that's a really well made example of it. But I th- like I think we're going to need to come up with new terminology. We just haven't found it yet because this is the Wild West and nobody knows what the rules are yet. Make up a word right now, Alan. You can do it. If anybody can make up a word and it'll stick, it's Alan. Um, you just call it. You just call it a season. Like it's not like here's the new season of Transparent, and you don't even bother with like episodes. It's just chapter markers. Yeah, chapter mark. Oh, there's chapter markers in a uh, hateful eight. There you go. There you go. Distinct chapter markers. And once again, it all comes back to Quentin Tarantino (laughs) and feet. Doesn't it always, always, always come down to feet? And specifically his feet. (laughs) Or his love of feet, at least. Yeah. I have a weird love of feet, too. um, We can talk about 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 in in our therapy later. Um, In any event, you let us know. This went in an interesting direction. (laughs) I don't know what we're doing here anymore. You let us know what you think of feet. In the comments below, you can also tweet to us about feet. I'm Roth Cornett. I'm Alan Seppenwall. <laughs> and uh, show us your feet. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>